coronary artery disease with or without a heart attack and how medications can help you. This 20-minute video begins by teaching how coronary artery disease develops. By learning this, you will better understand how medications and lifestyle changes help prevent the disease from becoming worse. In addition, important information about the most common heart medications will be reviewed. First, look at the three photos and identify what they have in common. The red arrows point to the answer. The human body is made up of many muscles, including thigh muscles, arm muscles, and the heart muscle. All muscles need a steady supply of blood that carries oxygen. The harder or faster a muscle is working, like when a person is active, the more oxygen a muscle needs. Blood and oxygen are carried to the heart muscle by the coronary arteries. There are three main coronary arteries that branch off into smaller arteries. The three main arteries are the right coronary artery, the circumflex coronary artery, and the left anterior descending coronary artery. The lining or inner surface of the coronary arteries begin as a smooth surface. But over time, the lining is damaged from inflammation. Four modifiable factors cause a significant amount of the injury. High blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and smoking are some of these factors. They are modifiable because you can change how much they affect your health by making lifestyle changes and or taking medications. Fats and cholesterol begin to collect in the areas of injury. At first, blood can still flow by freely. But over time, more cholesterol and fats build up in this area, especially if you do not modify or change your risk factors. This is called coronary artery disease. Depending on your age and family history, you may be more likely to develop blockages that affect the flow of blood. When blockages decrease the flow of blood, this means less blood is delivered to the heart muscle. When your heart muscle cannot get enough of blood, it does not have the oxygen and energy it needs to work. Angina is a medical term for discomfort, oftentimes located in the chest, caused by the heart muscle not getting enough of blood and oxygen. Signs of angina are similar but milder to those of a heart attack. You may have pressure, pain or tightness in your chest or shoulder. You may also experience pain or tingling in your jaw, upper back and arms, especially the left arm. Shortness of breath, sweating and nausea may also occur. Women can have similar symptoms to men. However, women often have more vague symptoms like stomach upset or burning, nausea, trouble breathing, feeling weak, or much more tired than usual. If signs of angina are ignored and a person does not seek medical attention, coronary artery disease can lead to a heart attack. The next few slides explain how a heart attack can happen. Blockages can change slowly or quickly. A sudden change in a blockage can lead to a heart attack. A sudden change is when either a small or large blockage ruptures. This rupture attracts platelets and clotting factors that are in the blood. Platelets, clotting factors, and red blood cells all clump together at the site of rupture and form a clot. The clot may completely block off the artery. Blood cannot flow past a large clot. When blood cannot flow by, that area of heart muscle does not get the oxygen it needs to live. This is a heart attack. During a heart attack, heart muscle is damaged due to a lack of oxygen. The amount of damage from a heart attack depends on many factors. The main ones include the size of the artery, the length of time the artery is blocked, and how completely blocked the artery is. 
The damage from a heart attack can be permanent if the blockage is not treated quickly. One way to treat a blockage is to use a coronary stent. The enlarged picture shows that a stent is a coil. It supports the artery, keeping it open. Coronary stents are placed in the catheterization lab. Oftentimes, milder blockages are found during the cardiac catheterization. These do not get stented. Medications and lifestyle change are the prescribed treatment to prevent smaller blockages from becoming larger. Medications that help your heart will be discussed next. People with coronary artery disease commonly use several types of medications. These can include cholesterol-lowering medications, beta blockers, platelet inhibitors, and ACE inhibitors. Each category will be explained in simple terms so you can understand why these medications are so important for your heart. Cholesterol-lowering medications have become one of the most important medication in preventing blockages and heart attacks. This category will be discussed first. Cholesterol is made up of different types of fat. One of them is HDL. This is a good cholesterol because it helps remove bad cholesterol from your blood. A low level of HDL is a marker for a higher risk for a heart attack. Exercise and heart-healthy diet can improve this number. LDL is another type of cholesterol. LDL is the lousy cholesterol. LDL is one of the main fats that form blockages in arteries. Most cholesterol medications try to lower your LDL level. Your liver makes the majority of the cholesterol that your body needs. But your body also gets cholesterol through the foods you eat. For example, red meats and fried foods, full-fat dairy products like cheese, shellfish like shrimp, and breakfast foods like eggs and bacon all have higher levels of cholesterol. If you have coronary artery disease, you need to decrease the amount of cholesterol and fats that you eat. And you still need medication because genetics, the makeup of your genes, is usually a larger contributor to high cholesterol levels. Statins are the most effective type of cholesterol-lowering medications. Atorvastatin, also known as Lipitor, is one medication that belongs to this group. Sometimes people may need additional medication to get their cholesterol into a better range. Statins rarely cause side effects. Some patients have reported feeling muscle pain. Report this or other symptoms to your doctor. He, she may change the medication. Avoid drinking or eating grapefruit when taking a statin. Remember to take your statin. Research has proven that the lower the LDL level, the lower the risk of heart attack and stroke. Do the LDL limbo. How low can you go? Beta blockers will be discussed next. Beta blockers are a mainstay treatment for coronary artery disease and heart attacks. This group of medication lowers your risk for repeat heart attacks and for dangerous heart rhythms. Over time, beta blockers also improve your heart's ability to pump, which is very important, especially if you have been diagnosed with a weak heart. Beta blockers perform these beneficial actions by blocking or protecting your heart from a chemical that makes your heart work harder and faster. Beta blockers help the heart work smarter, not harder. There are several types of beta blockers. They each work in slightly different ways. Two common ones are metoprolol, which has the brand name Low Presser. Another is Carvedilol, which has the brand name Coreg. The doctor will order the one that is best for you. Beta blockers may cause fatigue. This is a common feeling after a heart attack anyways, and so will be monitored. This feeling of being tired may go away with time or may require a change in medication dose by your doctor. Also report symptoms such as lightheadedness or dizziness. Diabetic patients, please be aware that beta blockers may mask the symptoms of low blood sugar. 
Platelet inhibitors will be discussed next. These medications help decrease clot size. Some people are aware that aspirin is a platelet inhibitor, but other ones exist as well. Clopidogrel, also known as Plavix, Ticagrelor, also known as Berlinta, and Prasugrel, also known as Effiant, are the other platelet inhibitors. Like aspirin, they prevent platelets from clumping together. Remember, a heart attack occurs when a blockage or plaque suddenly ruptures and a clot forms that blocks blood flow. Platelet inhibitors help prevent clots from forming and decrease the risk of repeat heart attack. Platelet inhibitors also improve survival rates. Platelet inhibitors are also prescribed if a person receives a coronary stent. Platelet inhibitors are needed after receiving a stent because the opening of the blockage by the balloon and the stent that was left in place attracts platelets every day for a period of time. Plavix and Berlinta keep your stent free of platelets. Your doctor will prescribe either aspirin and Plavix or aspirin and Berlinta. If you forget to take these medications, your stent may become blocked with platelets and you may have a heart attack. This type of heart attack can be more deadly. Your doctor will tell you how long you need to be on these medications. It depends on the type of stent you received and your risk factors for having another heart attack. It's very important to take platelet inhibitors as prescribed by your doctor. Be aware you may bleed easier and it may take longer to stop bleeding. Take care to not cut yourself. For example, use an electric razor and a soft toothbrush. Always report any significant hit to the head, even if you do not lose consciousness. Lastly, check with your pharmacist before buying over-the-counter medications when you are on a platelet inhibitor like aspirin, Plavix, Berlinter, or Effiant. Over-the-counter pain medications may cause stomach bleeding. For example, please avoid taking over-the-counter medications that may contain ibuprofen or naproxen. Examples of some brand names are Motrin, Advil, and Aleve. Some over-the-counter medications may contain aspirin. Please avoid these as well. It is very important that you take the dose of aspirin prescribed by your doctor, but you do not want to take more by taking pain medication that contains aspirin. ACE inhibitors will be discussed next. You will need to take this type of medication if your heart muscle is weakened by the heart attack or to prevent future weakness. This type of medication may also be prescribed to treat high blood pressure. A heart with weakened muscle is prone to change its shape and size after a heart attack. The heart may become larger, and this is bad. An enlarged heart cannot pump as well as a normal sized heart and can make the valves not close properly. In this picture, the red arrows point to the valves that may not close all the way in an enlarged heart. The above factors can lead to heart failure. ACE inhibitors help prevent the heart from becoming enlarged. This helps prevent the development of heart failure. And because of this, ACE inhibitors make it less likely that you will die after a heart attack. ACE inhibitors may also be prescribed if you have high blood pressure. High blood pressure occurs when your blood vessels are too narrow or constricted to let the blood through. ACE inhibitors help control high blood pressure by causing blood vessels to enlarge or widen. The wider blood vessel size lowers your blood pressure. Several ACE inhibitors are available. A common one is lisinopril. There is a similar group of drugs called ARBs or ARBs that you may be prescribed instead. An example of an ARB is Losartan. Your doctor will order the ACE inhibitor or ARB that is right for you. Remember, high blood pressure is consistent readings greater than 130 over 80. 
the top number or systolic should be less than 130 and the bottom number or the diastolic should be less than 80. As you get older, your doctor may accept slightly higher readings. ACE inhibitors may cause side effects. You may experience tiredness, headache, dizziness, or a dry cough. As with all medications, call your doctor if these symptoms bother you. Your doctor can adjust your dose of medication or order a different one so you can receive the benefits without the side effects. The last medication to be discussed is nitroglycerin. This is a small tablet that is placed under the tongue. It is only to be used if you are experiencing angina. It will not stop a heart attack, but it may help relieve the pain while you are seeking medical attention. Next is a video showing a person having an angina attack and using his nitroglycerin as he was instructed by his doctor. Tim had a heart attack in stent place five years ago. He takes his medications as ordered and exercises by taking his dog for a brisk walk every day. During his walk today, he developed some chest tightness and shortness of breath. Tim has not experienced this before during a walk and knows that these symptoms may be angina or a heart attack. Tim sat down on a park bench and placed a nitroglycerin tablet under his tongue. Nitroglycerin can cause dizziness, so you should sit or lie down when using it. Tim knows he can take one nitroglycerin tablet every five minutes if the discomfort is still present for a total of three tablets. After five minutes, Tim still had some chest tightness so he placed a second nitroglycerin tablet under his tongue. A few minutes later, Tim was feeling better. The discomfort was gone. Tim called his heart doctor to let him know that he needed to use nitroglycerin. Tim would have called 911 if his symptoms were still present after three nitroglycerin tablets. Please remember to follow the instructions your doctor tells you if you develop symptoms of angina. Once a bottle of nitroglycerin is open, it expires in six months. Keep it in the original glass bottle with the cap tightly closed. When home, store it away from light, heat, and moisture. Do not store in a bathroom that can get steamy. Medication used to treat erectile dysfunction or prescription medications for migraine headaches interact with nitroglycerin. Tell your doctor if you are taking medications for any of these conditions. You may be instructed not to use nitroglycerin. Let's review. Your heart medications do the following. Helps to prevent your blockages from becoming larger and can shrink some blockages as well. Allows your heart to pump smarter or easier. Helps prevent repeat heart attacks. Allows better blood flow to your heart muscle helps prevent your heart muscle from becoming weak. Please take your medications until your doctor tells you otherwise. Abruptly stopping them can cause serious problems. If you're feeling better or if your blood pressure is improved, it is often because of your medications. In the future, if you're doing better, your doctor may discuss titrating or decreasing them. The doctors and nurses at Concord Hospital wish you luck on your journey to better heart health.